So we're about to see our working group coming into the ring. The first dog that's coming in isn't in the competition. It has won here, it's uh, an any, any variety import, and it won through, so it gets a chance to do a short lap of honor into the ring. So the greater Swiss mountain dog coming in there for a little lap of honor. Maybe next year or the year after, this will be in the main competition as well. Gets his moment of glory in the main ring. But here we come with the contestants for the working group. Next to me, of course, is Frank Kane. Wonderful, he's been judging one of these. We'll see that in a moment. Here we come with the Alaskan Malamute. Here's the Bernese Mountain Dog. The Bouvier de Flandre. And a big cheer for the boxer coming in now. And the Bull Mastiff, look at this. The Canadian Eskimo dog, a rarer breed. The very popular Doberman. The Dog de Bordeaux becoming increasingly popular in this country. The German Pinscher. Here's the handsome giant Schnauzer. And a big Great Dane. A Harlequin this year. The Greenland Dog. And another of the not so popular breeds here. And the Hovervart. Here comes the Leonberger, very popular. And the massive Mastiff. And here's the Italian cousin, the Neapolitan Mastiff. Very distinctive features. Always a soft spot for this one. The Newfoundland, big teddy bear. The Portuguese water dog strides in the ring, his young handler. And the ever popular Rottweiler. And the, the imposing giant Russian black terrier. And now the, St. the St. Bernard, which Frank was judging. And here's the Siberian Husky. And bringing up the rear, the Tibetan Mastiff. So there we have our group, which Bob Gregory is going to have to select the finest. A lovely job for him. Spectacular entry seeing these working dogs come in, isn't it, Frank? And Always very important, he's walking down the line, taking his first view of the dogs, taking their general outlines and balance. They always amaze me when they come out. I walked through the collecting ring and the, the, the Mastiff was sitting out there, well, was rather standing out there. He's enormous this year. He's a big boy. This really is the giant group. Not in, num not in numerical numbers, but certainly in size. And Some of course, fantastic dogs there. All dogs, all of the breeds illustrate the services of dog to man in times gone by and in the present day. It just shows the relationship between man and dog. They're guarding dogs, rescue dogs, water dogs, fantastic array. Look at the wonderful silhouette of the Newfoundland there. It's uh, <laughs> stunning, but I mustn't get carried away. Well, we never know what's going to happen here. We, uh, I don't know if there's really a favorite in this group, but look at them all. There's a St. Bern that you judge. Do you enjoy that today, Frank? M marvelous entry, Wonder wonderful classes. Well, some of these breeds really are very well numerically represented. 
And now it's the... Now the Alaskan Malamute, this is the strongest of these sled dogs. It's a haulage dog, bred for strength, not speed. Powerful shoulders, deep chest and strong hind quarters, which he needs for pulling. It's very functional, that strong head and those ears, which are furred inside. Very so he's become the breed record winner today. He really is a big dog, this one, isn't it? 71 centimetres or so at the shoulder. Bred and born to pull sledges. Yes. The biggest winner ever in the breed. He became the breed record winner. Very stylish, strong and powerful. He's a house dog as well, isn't he? Thick, coarse coat, woolly undercoat. Doesn't mind the cold. Well, this magnificent dog is a Bernese mountain dog. He's called George. He's only 18 months old. 206 of them were here today. It's wonderful coloring, black, tan, and white. This is a draft dog, one of the most strikingly beautiful of the Swiss dogs. Enjoys being harnessed to and pulling a light cart. Trace back to the Roman troops 2,000 years ago with dogs that guarded their supplies on the move. They really are lovely, never aggressive, they're obedient, easily trained, they make devoted family pets. This one coming from a very famous kennel. One best to breed here before with last year with another bitch from the kennel. This smooth action should be free striding, economical strides and parallel front action. Now, the Bouvier de Flanders. This is a, comes from the Belgium and the, the Low Countries, and this one has actually come from Holland, from the Dogs Farm Kennel, which is very famous over there. This harsh matte coat, strong, powerful body. They were bred as cattle herders, but they've shown their versatility as tracking dogs, guarding dogs, compact and strongly built, and striding out well here. They have quite a formidable appearance with those eyebrows, the beard and moustache. But they're amiable dogs. And that coat is so thick, you know, you're supposed to part it and not be able to see the skin. It's so matte and dense, weatherproof, of course. So here we have the boxer. This is uh, a bitch, again, a young dog, only a young bitch, actually, 17 and a half months old. A gentle meat boxer does not exist. At least that's what it says in the breed standard. They're extrovert, they're energetic, but loyal and fun-loving. Originally, the breed came from Germany, but uh, possibly Great Dane and Bulldog in their ancestry. Been in this present form, though, since the 1800s. Now this is a this has been a big winner. Only only not yet two years old. She's, she's had great success, but she ju just a little bit uncomfortable moving around there. Not quite confident as she usually is. It's a big arena. This Gruff's best group ring. Now. And now the bull mastiff. Very popular. Originally, the guard dog for gamekeepers to ward off the poachers. So they have to combine strength but with athleticism. They should be able to jump a five barred gate. Strong in the head, powerful body and bone, but he has to have agility and athleticism. Lovely dog. <laughs> And apparently they do have very acute hearing. Makes excellent house dog, very strong but responsive to 
what is called kindly discipline. I judged this dog in Australia last year. He was my group winner at Sydney Royal Show. So it's wonderful to see him winning here at the, the world's biggest dog show. So a great double, Sydney and Crufts now. Fantastic. This dog uh, is called Rook and he is of course a Canadian Eskimo dog. Over time breeds vary in popularity. There are only 17 of these here today. Uh, in the 1920s there were more than 20,000 of these Canadian Eskimo dogs in Canada. Then with snowmobiles replacing sledges they decreased and uh, there were perhaps only about 200 dogs left by the 1970s. Common again now in Canada, though. Yes, and typical, this long tail plumed over the back. When they, when they curl up and go to sleep in the extreme climates, they can wrap the tail around themselves and give themselves protection. And again, functional, inside those ears, there's fur to keep them warm and keep out the cold. So, Spitz characteristics, pricked ears, high plumed tail. And now we have the Doberman, coming from a huge entry today. This was a breed developed in Germany around the 1860s by Herr Louis Doberman, which is how he gets its name. It was used for guarding and police work and for tracking, but it's been used in, you know, by the police force, by the armed forces, smart, highly intelligent, very trainable. This clean silhouette, slightly sloping top line, wedge-shaped head. This again comes from a very successful kennel. Yes, quite a lot of different breeds involved in uh, getting a Doberman to look like that. A mix of perhaps Weimarana, Rockweiler, Greyhound, Manchester Terrier, a whole mixture, but that's the Doberman. No, oh, this is the Dog de Bordeaux. There are 143 of these here today, which I find quite quite amazing. He's called Toto. He's only four and three quarters. Um, surprisingly agile because these are an impressively large mastiff type dog, a distinctive large head, able to jump considerable heights. An ancient French breed, really, and uh, struggled for survival in the middle of the last century, but they've developed, and there are quite a lot of them around now. They're becoming increasingly popular. Um, they are really a cousin of the bull mastiff. They're smaller, lower to the ground, not leggy, and they have to drop their head. Their head carriage usually goes lower when they're on the move, and that's very correct for breed deportment. Of course, they've become popular. Their macho image has rather made them overpopular, but the breeders are working hard to get them sound and not overpopulate them in the market. So, a lovely breed. Originally bred for fighting, sadly, but also hunting dogs. And here's another pincher. This is just, we've just seen the Doberman. Here is the German pincher. It's related to the Dobe, smaller version. Here we have a red one, uh, which also comes in the black and tan. Now, it's always, this is the middle size of pincher, the Doberman in the working group. We'll see the miniature pincher on Sunday in the toy group. Of course, pincher is, is the German word for terrier, but uh, really they're rather too long-legged, aren't they, to go to ground, as, as we would think of a, yes, for a they terrier. Can, they, they can do a multitude of jobs. I'm always surprised that they've not caught on more to become more popular, because they're handy size, very little grooming, and they're highly intelligent and make very good family pets. I'm sure instantly recognisable here, the giant schnauzer. This is uh, Lexi, this is a bitch, four years old. Very imposing dogs, there are 56 of these judged here today. Not as many as I would have thought. Large and square in outline, really combines strength and agility. It's been known as a breed from the 15th century when farmers in the Munich area 
used them as a droving dog. And of course, large cattle droves stopped uh, once the railways arrived, so that stopped all that. They're a very handsome breed. Again, they've, they've become very popular in the police force and in the armed forces as tracking dogs too. Strong, substantial. The black is the most popular color in the giant schnauzers. They also come in the pepper and salt. Now, love those whiskers. Just fantastic. Prominent eyebrows as well. Gives a keen expression to the dog. And here's the Great Dane. It's a harlequin. This is the colour which describes it. A black, uh, a white background with patches of black or blue. It's one of the great challenges to get good colour as well as a good dog. The Great Dane is really, although the, it says Dane in the title, it was developed in Germany as a hound. It's really a, a, a boar hound for, yes, <laughs> noble head. Great quality there. Yeah, as you say, it's been, it's been known as the national dog of Germany since 1876. It was inter introduced to Britain the following year. An excellent house dog if you're prepared to cede ownership of the settee. And dash and daring, the standard I saw, that should be ready to go everywhere. This is moving very confidently with a lovely level top line there. That's imposing. Dash and dare, the great day. Excellent guard and, and a watchdog too. Should have good length of leg deep chest and this long clean head another of our spitz dogs this is the greenland dog this is uh, sava a five-year-old uh, bitch and uh, these are all purpose haulage dogs, somewhere between, they fit between the Alaskan Malibut and the Siberian Husky in both size and weight. They've never really been terribly well domesticated and don't easily fit into the family pet category. Yes, they're, they're what you might call a primitive breed in that they, they need sensible owners and, and but you know, I think that's, that's a good way. They have to be sensibly handled, they have to be socialised. I'm told if they do socialise with, with, with others, they're quite happy to get into a howl in. I don't know how tuneful it would be. You can see the quality of the coat here. It's outer coat, harsh, protective, woolly undercoat to help it in the cold climates. The Hover, Hovervart, developed in, in Germany as a farm dog, a general farm dog. It's become a little bit more popular here. Functionally, here we have a black and tan or black and gold. They also come in blonde or gold. Beautiful silky coat. Functional, absolutely unexaggerated. Got nice shoulders for striding out. Clean, quality head and dark eyes. A very practical dog, very attractive as well, intelligent and trainable. And this one has come from France to win today. It just shows how popular it is, the one they all want to win at. This uh, is where we've got more and more dogs from overseas competing at Crufts. And they send their best, don't they? Absolutely. Another chance here, they send their best. Oh, there it is, the Lienberger. This one is just a two-year-old bitch, and uh, there are 155 of these judged here today. This is a dog that hails from the German town of Lienberg, produ uh, produced originally by crossing the Newfoundland with the St. Bernard. He's naturally a very powerful dog, though not quite as large as either of his uh, ancestors from the breeds from which he came. Created by the mayor of Lienberg in 1840. And incidentally, in Leonberg, the, the, the town crest has the Leonberger silhouette on it, which is uh, still there. Very handsome. This one's come from Sweden, where it's a big winner. 32 championships it's won in Sweden. 
Very smart, wonderful top line, striding out well. One of the big challenges with these big dogs is to get size with fluid movement. It's a, a breeder's challenge to get athleticism with size and substance. The Mastiff, used to be known as the Old English Mastiff. And again, this was another dog which was used by the gamekeepers to ward off poachers. Impressive in its size and substance. Powerfully built with strong bone, a rather truncated, rather short head. A s yes, smart, smart dog. It's recorded that when the Romans uh, invaded Britain, they found a Mastiff-type dog already here, and they were so impressed they took some back to fight in the arenas in Rome. This one is a fawn, a black mask. They also come in brindle. There's another foreign dog here. It's come from uh, France and Norway originally. From a very famous kennel, the Broomale Kennel, very famous on the continent. The Mastiff is rather longer in the body than the Bull Mastiff, quite different in the head, but again, it has to stride out and be athletic. It has to be imposing to frighten off the poachers and have the ability to chase them, so it needs both. Beautiful head come there. And his cousin from Naples, a Neapolitan Mastiff, Hilda here is a two-year-old bitch, 26 of them only here today. A very ancient breed from uh, Italy and the appearance there can be somewhat forbidding. A formidable guard dog, originally bred to fight in the arena, but has been used in the past as a war dog, a police dog, a guard dog and a draft dog, multi-purpose first shown at a dog show in 1946 in Naples, so uh, although been around a while, it's uh, only shown recently. Now it might be related to the Mastiff, but we have again different colours, we have this blue colour, this blue brindle and dark. We did. The, the breed has suffered in the past from exaggeration of too much skin, but the breeders are working hard to get rid of any exaggeration. They used to lead the Roman centurions into battle. They were forbidding dogs to frighten off the enemy and often went into battle with spiked collars round their necks. That would be a very forbidding sight. Frighten me, that's for sure. A little loose, a little loose skin is allowed on the head should not be exaggerated at all. Now, the Newfoundland. From a huge entry today, this Newfoundland has won. Originating in North America, certainly it was very popular there as a water rescue dog, helping to, br helping to bring in the nets. It could rescue people, still hugely popular, very imposing lovely clean outline on this one. Another foreign dog to get uh, through to the group here. This is from Italy. And uh, as you say, they, they, they were boat dogs. They would take a rope ashore. They can pull a rowboat. Immensely strong. They've got web feet. And they are wonderful dogs to live with. I've, I've kept them, and I think they're absolutely tremendous. I just adore this breed. And again, this weatherproof coat on the top should be a little bit oily to give it some weatherproofing. But the, what, as you say, Peter, lovely to live with, as long as you don't mind a bit of hair and a bit of slobber. <laughs> yes, a lot of each, actually. <laughs> they need moderate exercise. This regular grooming and quite a lot of it I have to say but absolutely fabulous well there were 48 of these Portuguese water dogs here today uh, they may have been taken to um, Portugal by the Moors from North Africa it's not certain fairly recent newcomer to uh, the UK Fishermen in Portugal use these dogs, though, in service with their boats. They've been trained to retrieve lost nets and uh, to swim from boat to shore. 
used to be hunting dogs and the coat very distinctive it is trimmed out over the uh, tail leaving a plume at the end and there are two different coat types really aren't there on the yes it's the longer coat there's also a shorter coat now it's a functional trim really because they clip off the hind quarters to help the dog's propulsive power in the water and this mane of hair at the front to give it some buoyancy and the plume on the end to protect the end of the tail when when working and that, that tail should be carried in a scimitar like curve over the back this one a brown get any color black black and white brown brown and white the solid colors are more popular in this country Now, the very handsome and impressive Rottweiler. Again, it's thought that the dog was developed in Germany, but brought there by the Romans as they marched across Europe. They are a drover's dog, which means that they used to drive the livestock to market. This handsome black and tan, dense weatherproof coat, strong head, very versatile. Very easily trained to be obedient. They enjoy working. They've got natural guarding instinct. So it's not really a dog for the inexperienced or someone just seeking a macho image. You know, it's a very serious dog to keep. Very active, needs plenty of exercise. This one showing lovely proportions, this level top line. The, the richness of the tan is very important. It's very sad that this breed has had a bad press in the past because they're a wonderful dog as long as they've got sensible owners who bring them up well. Strong head, striding out as all working dogs should. They have to cover maximum ground with minimum effort. Well, this Russian Black Terrier has come from Lithuania to take part here and has won through over 37 others. Dog created by the Russian army after World War II to catch fugitives. Needs to be able to cope with the extremely cold Russian climate at times. It's, it's obviously a crossbreed. It's a giant schnauzer crossed with Airedale Terrier and Rottweiler, who we've just seen. The breed just recognised in the UK as late as 1998. Too big to go to ground as a Terrier, however. Uh, very much so. <laughs> you could hardly get your hand round the bone on this dog's legs. Really strongly built. The coat is of medium texture. It's trimmed and given a little bit of shape. We can see some of the, sh the schnauzer shape in it, but it's much more substantial. S strong head. Now, I've had the pleasure of judging St. Bernard's today, and this one was my best of breed winner from 88 of them. It's a, a bitch from a very famous kennel, the Shandimor Kennel in this, in this country. This, of course, was a rescue dog bred at the hospice of St. Bernard to help travelers through the St. Gothard Pass. And it was reputed that they used to f find the people with a brandy barrel strapped around their neck. A bit of folklore there. Yes, these dogs are certainly less leggy, aren't they, than they the original breed was, a benevolent, kind temperament, and the expression shows that. And, 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 and this one has outstanding movement. Apparently she was best of breed at Crufts last year and striding out well. Again, size, substance, and great athleticism on the move. The benevolent St. Bernard, they must have this benevolent kindness in their nature and in their expression. Now we have the Siberian Husky, Zizu, comes from me in my hometown in uh, Suffolk. 180 of these here today, it's a very popular long distance sledge hauling dog. It's also known as the Arctic Husky. 
He was literally born to pull sledges, and there's probably not a thought in his head about doing absolutely anything else. And he's a very strong dog. When they move, they'll pull your arm out. If you get two of them in tandem, they'll, they'll probably put you in hospital. Uh, very, very difficult. This is the lightest of the sled dogs, the lightest and fastest of them. But as you say, the instinct to pull is bred in them. I was in Finland once where there was a, a, a whole a tr a group of them being exported and they slept in the snow, curled up, no problem at all. They're very hardy and they're functional. That, again, that thick coat, the ears furred inside and that tail to wrap around. This one just looks a little bit diffident. She's not, not, he's not very happy here. And the Tibetan Mastiff, a very strong breed. Again, it was a guarding breed from Tibet. Again, it's built to withstand the harsh extremes of climate, this strong head, this rough round the neck of, of thick fur, strong bone and chest, and again, that plumed tail. This is a new breed new to challenge certificates in this country. In his home country, he can be quite a, a ferocious guard dog. Tibetan villagers used to have two mastiff types, one to protect livestock and one to protect their, their territory. And this is the combination of both of those things. The movement is tremendous, and I love those distinctive marks on the eyebrow. Yes, the, the, the black and tan here has the correct tan markings in the legs, face, under the tail. But it's important, as, like all of these big dogs, they need sensible owners. So Bob Gregory has now seen the entire group, and what a magnificent group it is. I've been very impressed with them today. Well, he's got the difficult task, and this is a difficult task here, to find the best of these wonderful dogs. We need to know what he's going to choose. What is he going to pick? As he takes one last look along the line, he will make his shortlist. I just wonder what it's going to be. Here's the Alaskan Malamute and the Bernese Mountain Dog. Also coming in is the Boxer and the Bull Mastiff. It's going to be interesting how many he picks the great out. Day. He's picked the Harlequin Dane. The Leon Berger from Sweden. And the Newfoundland, good man. I knew he knew what he was doing. <laughs> and the St. Bernard, Ooh. of course, I'm happy about that. <laughs> A wonderful short list of eight there. The Alaska Malamute, number 4879. Bernie's Mountain Dog, number 5106. I think we'll see the dogs moving again, just checking out on their out and back movement. They re moves them up and down, doesn't it? Yes, he? see that they're firm, driving away, getting their hocks well underneath them and striding out in front. A slight slope in the top line from withers to tail set, which is a breed feature here of the Alaskan Malamute. Very young dog, 18 months old, this one. As you say, 18 months old, and, but coming from a very famous kennel. The Meadow Park Kennel has produced a lot of winners. And the box are very young bitch here, 17 now, and a half months, Dolly. And, and now looking more confident. You can see by the tail carriage and her top line that she's now more confident. She's become acclimatized in the ring and going much better now.
This is the dog that uh, has come from Australia in the last six months and has made a great impression, winning best of breed here. Athletic and substantial, and a very good moving dog. Now, the spectacular great day in this wonderful Harlequin colours and that beautiful gait that they have. It's been a long day for them, showing beautifully really using its hindquarters well to drive it along. Now it's the turn of the Leonberger. Popular choice here, the Leonberger getting a lot of applause. The perfectly level top line, which is a sign of good balance and construction, which is, it's not just a beauty show, it has, the dogs have to be soundly built to move well and are functional. And talking of good outlines, here's the Newfoundland. Really striding, well, big barrel ribs under that coat to give them buoyancy in the water, carrying its tail perfectly with this slightly oily, weatherproof coat. And wonderful temperament, just loving every minute of oh, it. Oh, absolutely, they do, they like to show. And so does this one get a dog of this size and substance. He's chosen a very good selection of dogs and this will be hard. You've got eight good ones, you have to now get down to the final four. This is where you're nitpicking, as we say, or fine differences between the dogs. Well, one last look. The boards are out, so he has made his decision here. Bob Gregory. Yes, he's just checked. He's going over to the left-hand side. Is he going to pick straight away? The Alaskan he has Malamute. The Alaskan Malamute. He's had a great day, become the breed record holder, which is the biggest winning dog in the history of the breed, and he's crowned it all with winning the work the working group here. He's called Bart, he's, uh, or rather, and he's four years old. And Sue Ellis from Sale in Cheshire. And an overjoyed young handler from Sweden with a beautiful Leonberger. Wonderful, wonderful. And then the Ma I'm very pleased, the Bull Mastiff. Gaining yes. recognition at group level, a the lovely Australian dog. dog here. And your St. Bernard gets scoop four. Well, there we go. Your cup runneth over, Frank. This is Maddie. And there's our winner, the Alaskan Malamute. This four-year-old dog. Famous kennel based in Cheshire. Sue Ellis has been involved in the breed since they became popular in this country. She's had a lot of champions, but I think this win will be very memorable for her. Breed record holder on the day, group winner on the day. What more can you want? Absolutely. What a tremendous... Well, I thought it was a wonderful group. A really fabulous dogs to look at and see there. Quite marvellous. And... Now the presentation takes place. One of the special group trophies from Crofts going out. That's right, the presenter is Mr. Gordon Mitchell from Croft Engineering. The escort bringing him out there was uh, Mrs. Anne MacDonald again, vice chairman of the Crofts Committee. Mastiff. And George St. Bernard collecting. Yes, that's, I mean, what a, what a moment. These four dogs, one through from several thousand dogs here today. These four have come through. But the winner, no question, lap of honour as we watch the Alaskan Malamute take a round of triumph.